And what's going on? It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab, and I'm on the NPC Renaissance. I had a um, VIP member hit me up. They were wanting to know how they could sample from machine into the NPC Renaissance, which is uh, kind of an extraordinary workflow, I guess you can say. Uh, yeah, that with the Renaissance, you can sample from pretty much anything. But uh, yeah, that that's one workflow. I don't have a problem showing you how to do that. Um, so let's just run through some of the basics right quick. This is the main area. This is the project information area where pretty much anything you do as far as setting up your programs, you know, if you're setting up um, pad mutes and things of that nature, for example, under your program edit. This basically is where, you know, all your 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 program assignments are going to get shown up. For example, one of the cool thing about it is like this all edit zone feature. You could do multiple, you know, if you just want to do like a couple of different banks at the same time or the current one using or you can do all of them. You can do, um, <clears throat> let's say, like a whole entire pitch shift over all these groups at one time. Kind of kind of how you can do inside the NPC 4000. And um, I guess the 5000 was supposed to get an update on that. I'm not really sure about that. But that's an awesome feature in itself. So, you know, your attack um, or rather your ADSR modes and all, all that good stuff can be found here. But I'm not going to go really in depth in that right now because I'm trying to keep this video um, extremely short. And this is your program mixer. And this is your track mixer. And uh, I'll show you this in a second. That's how you'll get machines set up. This is your track views where all your sounds and your mixing and your song modes show up here. You know, if you're importing legacy files or whatever the case may be, you can go through filters such as program, you know, sequences. You can find your sequences projects. And you also have folders up here where you can, you know, you can go through your sounds and, you know, you can pretty much set up how you want it. This right here is your, is your sequencer. Basically, you know how it goes inside your MPC when you're doing your songs. This basically is how it plays in order, uh, kind of linearly like that. And this is if you want to uh, record your sample right there. You see it's recording the mic. Um, usually to be set up like this on external, but uh, if I put it on resample, you're gonna need it on resample if you're gonna be resampling internally, uh, as I'm gonna be doing from machine here. This is where you edit your samples. We'll, we'll, we'll get into all of that. And this is where you set up your pad mutes, your track mutes, and also you have a um, step, step sequence here. But again, I'm not going to get too in-depth in that. Um, over here, these are your zooms. Um, if you want to zoom in and out on the tracks, you know, you can increase the sizes, things like that. Of course, over here, you can get your automation set up. You know, whatever you want to do. All right, so let's say, for example, if you're looking for some drum sounds, over here we have the drum sounds. Uh, this is one of my drum kits I'm currently working on. But the cool thing about it, you can take a drum sound and just drop it on the pad. Boom. Easy as that. That's how you would a machine. And you can hold shift on another sound and you can layer it. But what I like about it is see the, the little red bars, how it goes into four assignable slots. You can be very choosy with that. You can actually, you can align your layers where you want your layers to be. Like say if I wanted this one to be on the bottom. Okay. Now that's beneath that. I can grab another one, add that one there, add that one way down to the bottom. Well, I grabbed, I grabbed the same uh, sound, but it doesn't matter. And we'll grab one. We'll put this one maybe right here in this little slot here. So I thought that was kind of cool. You actually can, you know, put them where you want them. And right now I have the sound turned down on my, um, on my monitors right now because I don't want any feedback on my mic because my mic is coming. Uh, through my speakers and that that drives me crazy but you see right here the leds are sounding off all right so up under here over where it says edit okay you see right here where it's saying plugins okay where it says vst folders you will notice where it's saying ableton live uh resources plugins that's just how i have my name no big deal and you just press scan new and all your plugins would come in so to access those you would go over here under your track view I'm sorry, not your track view, but your track mixer. And you would turn this little on button on here. You would go over here. Now you see right here, these are some of the built in um, plugins that come with the Renaissance as well as the studio. Uh, the studio comes with the bank and I think you get to choose one free one, whereas the Renaissance, you get like everything, the wub and all that good stuff. And um, you see when I go past those, you see how it goes. Well, let me see if I can find it right there. External effects. These are the ones that you know, your regular VST, you know, like these are some of my waves ones. So after I move down a little bit more, I even can pull up machine through there, right there. I could pull it up like that if I wanted to, you know, which is 
kind of awesome little feature in itself but um <clears throat> what you want to do is switch your mode go to plugin machine okay you notice how a little piano roll came up all right so now we're on machine so now when i go over here when i pull up machine okay the only thing you have to do to get this set up is right here where it says sound midi batch setup you want to have it sounds to midi notes and click apply okay now once you get that set up i just i got to check one more thing okay the bar i got the bar short just for the sake of the video now i'll show you what i'm talking about when i pull this up when i press play here let me see if I can hurry up and bring this up. See how it's playing? Over here, in machine, you see it's playing. The sequencer is running. It's it's synced up perfectly. And the sound right here that's on this particular um, sound is what's triggering right here. See, as I be quiet on the mic, you see the LED going off. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. So now if I go over here under sample record, if I go under external, this is me talking on the mic, but to sample machine, I want to have it on resample. Okay. So now once I have it on resample, when I press play, okay, let's let that go. We know that's playing, uh, what's inside machine, because if I go back, you see the time marker running there. And you see the sound triggering off here in machine. Okay. So now the audio is being uh, bust in into uh, the Renaissance. So now I go over here. I got my input monitor on. I just simply hit record. Press stop. I'll press keep on that. You see the audio file just came in. So let me go back over here to machine and stop that. Make sure we turn that off. All right. Then I hit this little off button here. <clears throat> and I think that's where you were getting confused, man. Like one of the key things like right here, you have to turn that insert button off. If it's on like that, um, when you're trying to make your program group, um, I think it, when you hit the pads, the pads are just going to be blank. You like, you'll be tapping on the pads and it's just going to, um, yeah, it'll just, it'll just drive you crazy. And this, this part will drive you crazy too. If you don't do this right, you see right here under the project information, the sample is labeled as sample number two. Okay. So what we want to do now with this sample is we basically want to edit it. Okay. So let me shrink this down. All right. So here's our sample. And right now this isn't going to make any sense. Cause you know, I'm just doing this blind, but you know, if you wanted to trim it, you know, you have your, your cue controls here. You know, if you want to adjust the endpoint on that, that's one way you can do it from the hardware controller, or you can use these little knobs here. Okay. So let's just say for the sake of argument, this is what we wanted or rather for the sake of the video, I'm going to shorten this a little bit because I don't want it to go too long. Let's just do it like that. Then you go over here on the chop. You want to chop it up. All right. Now it's, it's on the audition. So you don't want to be on link slices. You want to be on audition. So now each sound, when I click on this, you know, it's, it's, it's auditioning. Now, again, of course, you can't hear that because my speakers turned down because, again, I don't want any feedback, but it's it's going through the slices. So if you want to overlap your samples, you know, if you want to do some non destructive um, chopping, which is a good thing, you know, it's, it's like setting your pads to mono and uh, it sets the program group to assign the mutes. You go to your little endpoints here and you just overlap them. So now I go like that. It plays the sample all the way to the end. And let me just hurry up because, again, I don't want to run too long this video drag these down all right so now we got our little regions i guess we can call them so now you want to go down here under our settings right up under where it says process your slices you, you know whatever you want to do to manipulate the sound you have that here we simply go to convert all right now you can do patch phrase let's say if you want to do some real time pitch shifting and time stretching uh, the pitch. If you did a patch phrase, you'd have to create a new uh, key group. And, uh, you know, I don't want to run too long, but uh, basically what happens is you make a key group and it's going to spread out over the pads and basically the sample will play out in its entirety. Um, no matter what you put the BPM 
well if you did the bpm that's more or less uh it's going to be time stretching to be slowing down whatever but the pitch diff you could you could speed the sample up slow the sample down but it's going to play out in the entirety or rather the entire length of the sample i hope that makes sense like that because i'm like really running on here all right so slice samples you see right there six samples right now it's just saying slices okay we press do it okay and you see them jump over here so now that that's a new program so you see right here it says program sample 002 um the s i guess that means slice i'm not really sure i have to read the manual on that but you know there's six slices so it's matching like it's the same slice one slice two so now we go back to the main here okay now you want to go back under here where it says instrument you want to go back to the npc mode and i think that's what got you stuck when you go back to npc mode okay and if you're over here and you're like yo where's my samples i see them over here you can't you can't drag these onto your pads i mean you can i don't know if it, i don't know if that would work but you got to go back to your program group okay this is where we want to be so program one these were your drums okay so now see when i hit that where it says sample 002 channel that's us man that's what we just did so now boom look instead of saying slices it says samples so now you know look up there well let me move this down a little bit and see if i can make oh yeah definitely do that let me make this a little bit bigger and let me put little marks on here just so it'd be easier to see think about well it's not mapping like that i'm just doing that for visual but look see how it's lighting up each little area you know and it goes above that but i don't feel like going up there but you see everything is perfect and you go into here look you can set up your uh your your, your mutes and your filters and and all and all that good stuff and they're in there in, in all the sounds they're 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 cutting they're cutting each other off because look the mute group look it automatically got set up the npc renaissance automatically threw them into its own mute group so that's tight you know so i can't think of an easier way um to get your audio that's the easiest way i could think to get it in there and look you can still go ahead go in here and edit each sample so that in itself is, is a major workflow so i mean i don't know i don't know what else to say man like that's pretty much how you get this the audio from machine into the npc renaissance as far as sampling and again i don't want to run too long in the video you know i just want to just go through some some basic things as far as um how the program is working you know and under your track mixer you know this little icon here is if you want to scroll through your channels they're all in there and that works the same for your program mixer you can go through everything like so and again you can go through your different folders of sounds you know whatever you have inside your computer you can set up filters you can search by your npc programs sequences or projects or you also can go into your computer you can go through your different hard drives and uh things of that nature to find whatever you need so i mean that's pretty much it man it's your boy joe fontaine the vip sound lab i have a vip membership it's only 9.99 no monthly fees i repeat no monthly fees we have free tutorial videos we never charge for tutorial videos on anything that we do tutorials on whether it's reason machine 1.8 renaissance what i mean whatever the case may be man we have a vip database with tons and tons of drum kits motif sounds npc sounds 5000 2000 we have reason sounds we have everything in there for free man we got tons of content there. controller editor templates it's able to live controller editor templates slice and chop presets waves presets we got tons of vip sound like drum kits midi files if you want to you know get a good starting point to actually jump your midi off we got midi uh files and things of that nature so yeah i don't again i don't want to run too long that's pretty much it man i hope that helped you out and you learned a little something on that because i'm i'm pretty much uh, still new to this program myself you know i'm not you know the uh, complete guru or whiz on this program either you know and i'm learning new stuff about this program every day but so far it's tight i love it incredible workflow awesome program also i did want to mention you had this uh the screen over here where if you want to adjust your views this is full mode and you can go back you know if you want to get a better look on your work and you got another view mode over here i forgot to mention that you know you know set up your quantization and thing like like that and 
Yeah, man, that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it, man. It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.